Okay, so I'm here. Uh, I studied the origin of species by Charles Darwin. I actually started it in high school in the 70s. And um, so here's a copy I got around 2005 at Barnes and Noble. And let me say that many different prints of the book have some different changes. But anyway, um, this is um, a chapter and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get to it. Um, here we go. Chapter six, difficulties on theory. Okay, so he have uh, titles, Organs of Extreme Perfection and Complication. To suppose the eye with all its in inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances for admitting different amounts of light and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been found could have been formed by natural selection seems I freely confess absurd in the highest possible degree Yet reason tells me that it is numerous graduations from a perfect and complex eye to one very imperfect and simple, each grade being useful to its possessor can be shown to exist if further the eye does vary ever so slightly and the variations be inherited, which is certainly the case, and if any variation or modification in the organ be ever useful to an animal under changing conditions of life then the difficulty of believing that a perfect and complete eye could be formed by natural selection though though insuperable by our imagination can hardly be considered real how a nerve comes to be sensitive to light hardly concerns us more than how life itself is first originated but I may remark that several facts make me suspect that any sensitive nerve may be rendered sensitive to light and likewise to those coarser vibrations of the air which produce sound. So let me just say this. Um, back when this book was written, people did not understand the complexities of the eye. For there to be something that then gets into an eye and if there was minor changes it wouldn't take a million years it wouldn't take a billion years it would take a trillion years of of uh, change to get us to that okay so i go further on um and uh, it says um if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications my theory would absolutely break down but i can find out no such case of course with limited resources limited knowledge of course he couldn't find it he's just looking at the outside has not much concept of uh, the inside so for example did he know about uh, dna that's a language. It's made up of five letters. It's made up of words, sentences, paragraphs, and chapters. It is a language. So imagine, uh, think about this probability. Uh, this is something that's been said many times in history by creationists. They would say, um, imagine you give a monkey a typewriter and you tell the monkey to um, type Shakespeare's Hamlet. So by chance, the monkey may have been in the zoo and there were some uh, Shakespearean students and they were just talking, memorizing the play, spoke it out loud and he remembered everything. And then by chance, he typed the letters and he got it perfectly correct. The odds, people say, well, that's impossible. Those odds are nothing compared to the express, uh, nothing compared 
to the difficulties, to the um, elaborate mechanisms in uh, one cell. Okay, so he said if two or more things, well, as I do on the trail, I talk about the woodpecker having more than 14 things that simultaneously had to be in place. Or let's keep it simple. Let's talk about the giraffe right here. I'll give a quick talk. So um, let's just say the giraffe was a zebra, let's just say. And there was a defect in genes and all that. And so uh, this, this zebra was born with, say, a 10-foot neck. Okay, well that zebra is going to, let's call it a giraffe now. That giraffe's going to die because the heart isn't strong enough to pump the blood up to the brain. So, not only did it just have to have a defective gene to make it a long neck, but it had to have a heart. And it's not just, a heart is not just something simple. It's a complex thing. Many things had to be in place for that heart to pump the blood up all the way up high. So let's say that this uh, giraffe has been thirsty. So it goes to a creek, river, it bends over its head. Guess what? That heart was so powerful, the most powerful in the mammal, mammal, to pump blood up to the brain. Now that it's facing down, that power would just blow its brain out. So now we have to have a check valve mechanism. So when the giraffe is facing down, it can't take the full pressure. But oh, guess what? So now, now that giraffe is down and it looks at 200 yards to the left is a lion and the giraffe says, I gotta get the heck out of here. So he lifts his head so he could see where he could run to and takes off. Well, guess what? He would pass out because there would not be sufficient blood in his brain. So, oh, by the way, there's a rev reservoir system. Let's call it like a sponge to comprehend it. So there's enough blood in there so he can jerk his head up, start running until the heart gets pumped up there all the time. All those things had to be at one time. Otherwise, the draft would cease to exist. So right there, that defeats one or more um, changes. So anyway, I just wanted to point this out that people who talk about the origin of species, people who talk about Charles Darwin, they, they've never even read the book. If they've read the book, you'll never hear anybody quoting the chapter on difficulties of theory. And it's chapter six. So anyway, I, I just challenge you to, to A, read the book, B, um, study that chapter, and C, know everything that we've learned. The microbiology, the DNA, the RNA, um, the cell, oh my gosh, the, the motor in the cell that goes from zero to 10,000 RPM instantly. It makes the Tesla look like a Tinker Toy, a Lego block, a Hot Wheel car. It's nothing compared to a cell. So anyway, um, those who just jump on the bandwagon and believe what government scientists say, yeah, I'm from the government, I'm here to help, or uh, school teachers who get books which are just um, printed with all kinds of uh, material which historically is not true and it's for their purpose anyway so that's my my little rant but it's a it's a true rant and I'd be happy to discuss it with anyone as I do on the trail